So um, to kind of end the more structured part of the conference, we wanted to have a panel discussion around MediaWiki best practices. And we've invited up here uh, Cindy Solis, Chickalise, uh, sorry, Brian Hildebrand, Darren Welsh, and Ben Fletcher, um, whom you all, I think, have heard of and met uh, over the course of the week, if not before. And uh, my name is Chris, and I'm the moderator. And so I've presented a few questions in, again, another etherpad that you can get to on the program. So um, I'm just going to start the conversation off with kind of a, a light question. Um, so again, these are best practices for using MediaWiki or adapting MediaWiki. So what uh, I'm going to start here with one of the um, questions Cindy actually put in the document here. How do you get a new wiki project off the ground? What's your best practices for starting, assuming you're starting from nothing? Uh, well, so I mean, we've already got several going, so if some new group comes to us, uh, well, actually our first question is, is usually, well, why do you think you need a wiki? Why do you deserve one? Uh, and that goes back to the merging conversation we had earlier was, uh, at first we were handing out wikis to everyone, but then we started realizing that probably wasn't the best approach. So maybe this isn't the, question, the answer you were looking for, but really think about the structure of all of them together and how how you really want your whole knowledge corpus to be organized and, and split. Um, <clears throat> back when I used to create new wikis um, for people other than myself, um, one of the first questions, obviously, what would be the access to the information, who will be using it, um, what their domain is, and probably everybody in this room has heard me say this several times, you know, we we would never start giving somebody just an empty wiki and say, you know, go forth and wiki, because that's just not going to work. There, you don't get the um, traction. You don't get people contributing when, you know, you, the blank page p piece of paper problem. So we would always um, talk about their domain and do essentially an object-oriented de decomposition. And, you know, what are the first-class objects? What are their attributes? Um, and then based upon that, create namespaces and forms and templates um, using page forms, using either semantic media, media wiki or cargo, um, set up categories, and give them a framework to hang their data off of um, as a starting point. And then what you find is people are able to contribute, and the more contributions you have, the more um, it builds steam, um, but you can't just give somebody an empty wiki and expect, but it's a little unfair since I wrote the question, so I already had an answer. Fair enough. Um, I think I'd, I absolutely agree with what Cindy said there in terms of um, when you've decided what you're going, uh, the, the, the route you're taking, absolutely hold the hand. Um, I think, but initially make sure it is the right content management system for you. So absolutely understand, break down what their requirements are, what, they, what the use cases are, and from there, then it, might, you know, it might not be the right content management system for what they want to achieve. Work out what their highest priorities are, and then base it from there. And hopefully, there'll be that convergence towards whichever content management system it is. Yeah, I think I agree with everything already said, and then just add uh, maybe try to set up um, a organizational structure, some people that you think might be champions and will be you know, really interested in training others and get them started as early as possible and then have content ready for, for the masses once everybody comes in. I wanted to add that um, there are an opportunity to ask questions in the, in the audience as well. That was just kind of a starter <coughs> question. I have some, if we, if we have a lull in questions, I have some here listed. But I do see a question, a hand raised in the back there already. Uh, yes. Uh, which role does the IT department play in this? I think that's a really, really good point because information is the, is the lifeblood of any organization and, and no, longer, no longer are IT departments seen as, as, as resource burdens. They're actually your way of, of um, gaining competitive edge. So more and more CIOs are sitting up there with the chief, with the chief executive officers, offering them their, that ability to exploit the information and sit there. So, and I think that trickles down. So the IT department need to be off giving the, C, the chief information officer, they need to be the knowledge, understanding the business. So, so they're now turning into business analysts as well as, as, well as, the, technical, as, as, well as the technical knowledge. So I absolutely see 
it's only going to grow the importance of the IT uh, of the IT team and and their responsibilities. And you want to be in that space where you are you are offering solutions to the organisation for them to go further. I have an opinion. <laughs> I agree completely. The IT department is absolutely critical, and um, that can be both a good thing and it can also be a real stumbling block. Um, I have had issues in the past where um, probably a lot of these people have had the same issue. Well, but we've already got SharePoint. We've already got Confluence. We pay for something. We've got people supporting it. You want us to install this piece of open source software and make us maintain it? Um, so that's one of the reasons why I, I frequently talk about the need to make it easy to install, upgrade, and maintain MediaWiki, that that needs to be something that is provided to the third party community, that the third party community develops and provides to itself. Um, until you can say to an IT department, hey, here's this thing, install it, don't worry, it'll work, um, that is, you're going to get pushback from IT. and so. Yeah, the IT department is absolutely critical, and you can either, ha either have them as your ally or your, um, I don't want to say enemy, but well, you know. Darren, Darren, going on with that, you know, we had some experience in NASA, maybe you can touch on, on the finding the right person to talk to in IT. If you come and present a presentation to IT, it's more likely to get shut down, where I think we had cases where we tried once with one person, they shut down, and we just had to find the right champion in the IT department. I don't know if you can talk to how we got started there. Yeah, not to get way back into the details of our history, but uh, we're in a kind of a unique case where we created the wiki kind of underground and and, and so we were our own IT department uh, in hiding, we like a guerrilla uh, wiki team. and But eventually we became public and, and let people know what we were doing and We've actually grown, we've built a good relationship with our IT department because we want it to succeed. So we've taken special effort to work with them to make sure we're meeting all of their requirements. And um, in some ways, so like, for example, the way that we are required to audit users when they request access and how, and how their uh, usership is maintained, uh, we do a way better job than SharePoint. Like SharePoint somehow has this like rule where they just, they're an exception and they don't have to do it. And we're like, well, that's lame. But we go ahead and work with them to meet those requirements. And so now we're kind of like this, the golden standard. People look at us and say, oh, well, you've done really well with the wiki. You know, and so now we've built clout, I think, by working with our IT department. Any other questions? I have to take one from the list here really quick. And Cindy, and I think, uh, I think all of you, I kind of mentioned this when I asked the first question about um, how do you get off the project off the ground. So wikis are different than I think what a lot of people maybe experience in their careers. You know, SharePoint and other things kind of are ubiquitous and other, you know, between, between companies, between positions, so on and so forth. Um, so they can be a little foreign and a little different. Um, how do you make it something they're comfortable with? How do you get those, find those, as you mentioned, Brian, those champions, what are some of your best practices to encouraging folks to take the wiki approach, as it were? So I'll just kick things off. Uh, I think one of the strengths of a wiki is it allows each person to contribute in the way that in which they're comfortable. So like some people are very technical detail oriented. Uh, some people would rather work on the structure and the organization of things. Uh, some people are more uh, kind of collaborative and want to you know, I mean, it kind of goes back a little bit to the gamification motives that I've talked about before, but so you don't have to tell people you're, this is your role and you have to do this with the wiki. You can just kind of let them gravitate to where they're going to be most useful. I think it's a, the key thing is a crit, is the critical mass. So once you get enough people who find the value in the wiki so rather than having to ask someone they can find that information i'm not saying don't communicate but you know it, there are the times where you want to find some information that wiki finds it that you've then you've then convinced that person the value of the wiki and when you get to a certain stage this critical mass happens and they all start contributing because they want to be part of this and they see the value of it and and getting to that stage is the challenge so there's 
you've either got mass support from a lot of people or you've got you've got uh, high level direction in terms of people being directed to you know what did you call it wiki time or something I can't remember in your presentation didn't you wiki I can't remember anyway in your presentation you took wiki quickie you know so you know I I think implementing a wiki quickie of everybody spend 20 minutes you know every day or, or so on just to just to contribute sometimes unfortunately because people are busy they need to almost have that direction to start with but once you hit that critical mass you're in a far better position yeah, I just say try to find, know, know the users, try to figure out what everybody's individual pain points are, and then address it. So it might be, um, I think a lot of the champions should be kind of servant leaders, where they just spend a lot of time talking, figuring out what's wrong, and then maybe constructing everything for the, that first user, um, and then you know, getting that one user to start doing it, and then that person will be the new champion for that department or area of the company. Just gonna also mention that critical mass is important, but it can also just be a critical mass of documents that have all been added. You can only have one real contributor and editor, but for all the lurkers, just having the critical mass of documents to start is another way of, I think there's two critical masses. One is the critical mass of documents or pages for the lurkers, and the other is the critical mass of contributors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that really quick, I think there's, I call them hooks, but something in the wiki that is only in the wiki that many users have to go to, and eventually after enough exposure of always getting this content out of the same place, you know, they start to realize they can actually edit and add and, and uh, contribute as well. Um, yeah, and to echo, you know, having a strong champion for the wiki is absolutely critical. The first wiki that I worked on um, called Robopedia at MITRE was the robotics wiki that we used to document everything within the robotics program I was working on. And the um, lead of that program said it didn't happen if it's not in the wiki. And so absolutely every meeting, every interaction between any people, any piece of hardware, equipment, any software had to get documented in the wiki. And if you tried to tell him something, his first question was, is it in the wiki? And if it wasn't in the wiki, he didn't want to hear about it until after it was. And that was absolutely critical to getting adoption. Yeah, that kind of made me think of another thing. So uh, in <coughs> traditional documentation, you might have one or two people that are each assigned as owners of a document. And so as that person, you end up getting all this input from people saying, here, can you add this to the document or this needs to be changed? But with a wiki, you can just say, no, you can change it yourself. And uh, you know, that's, at, at first people are like, oh, I, no, I, I'm not the expert. But you have to push that. You have to say, no, really, I want you to go change it. And if you get it wrong, I'll follow up and help you clean it up. Just one thing too is to talk, you know, talk to the users about fault tolerance and you know, just say, mess up do whatever and watch how quickly it gets cleaned up, right? So um, a lot of people are afraid to kind of edit the space where everybody else is looking, but, um, but if you show them how easy it is to revert uh, an edit um, or that other people are watching, it becomes really powerful. Okay. I have a question going to a different topic now and for the entire room, but more so for the panel, for you guys up there. Do you guys have any suggestions on how to approach management when they when starting a wiki, they, the question I've been seeing coming a lot is like, okay, from a cost, how much do I have to dedicate to start up this wiki, right? It's like, I need X amount of employees to do nothing but the wiki, which is not quite how many of us started. And so it's hard to convince them that, not, no, you can do this as a part-time thing to some of your employees, you just need those champions. But they still struggle that, no, I need to dedicate one year of six employees just to upload all the content or get all the structure right. And I'm, I have a struggle with how to approach that. So uh, I think in many cases you can bootstrap your wiki, uh, especially if you have word files. But I mean, we talked a little bit yesterday or day before about using Pandoc and there's, there's ways to import material uh, to get you started more quickly. Um, but then I, I think probably the first step is rather than adding additional workload, which I think is what management is usually concerned about, <clears throat> is finding a way to say, instead of doing it here, now we're doing it in the wiki. Uh, and so, and I keep going back to meeting minutes. I think that was a really 
a good way to get started where instead of just emailing out to the group some notes and then those notes just get lost forever in your email, now they're forever in the wiki and they're searchable and they're linked to articles. And so just replacing that one basic function right there will get you uh, committed. One other contribution to make towards that when it comes to using a sustaining operation as a way of moving to wiki is that um, when it comes to new hires who are forced to read all the training documentation in the org, they can convert it into media, uh, wiki markup as they're reading through that. So that's one way of, hey, those hours were going to be billed reading the material anyway. Likewise, if, uh, if your organization has proficiency training, uh, the same thing's happening. If you're re-reviewing all those documents or if there's the yearly requirement to review the documents, that's another time where if you're, if you're going through it anyway, the extra time it takes to convert it to media, uh, wiki markup is minimal. I think it's a really difficult question in terms of, you're absolutely right, I, I was very fortunate that I had supportive leadership that understood what the end game was, but it did mean I was going to be out of action in terms of focusing on this. So I think as a community, it's very difficult to, to to, because you don't know which direction you're going to go in. You know, the wiki is going to evolve as, as you're developing it and so on. And how do, you, how do you demonstrate business benefit early on? So I think as a community, we need to help with that. And, and, and what we are talking about before, you know, how can we just show basic scenarios that people could absolutely get and, and, and work off and say, look, this is what is achievable. Just give me some time off in terms of my main, you know, let me focus on this and I'll, I'll, I'll show you some benefit in this time. Okay. Go ahead. I, I hesitate to give this example, but, and I did not do this. Um, so, well, first of all, I'll say Wikipedia, obviously, is a great use case to point to folks when they are skeptical of the ability of a um, wiki to be useful. <laughs> you know, and so, um, granted, it is a completely different scale. So I heard a story um, of somebody that, um, was within the organization I was with who was trying to get a bunch of four-star generals on board with the idea of using a wiki. And um, the example that they did, and I do not advocate this, and I actually, you know, you should not do, do not do this at home. But they, in order to get these folks to understand that this is not, uh, that this is, it, that this will work, um, they actually went out and edited a page on Wikipedia and changed the birth date of some famous person and within moments it was reverted and fixed and you know which is wonderful and self-healing don't do it <laughs> um, but you know in, in a positive way if you can use Wikipedia to show the utility of, um, of the wiki as a model um, I think that's a great way to convince management and even four-star generals I think uh, going back to kind of a point there about selling it and uh, you know, getting approval, a lot of, there seems to be um, uh, generally two different, and this is a very large generalization, some wikis are started as a computer under somebody's desk and they grow organically and slowly, you know, another team, another team, another department. And it's other ones are more, hey, we got this plan, we got a structure in place, a you know, we have an ontology or a schema and we're going to start off with a whole big initiative and the wikis kind of you know, hits the ground running. So two different ways to get started, but eventually it always seems to be, in, at least in my experiences and ex hearing the experiences of others, at some point management wants to know, how are you measuring this? How are you saying this is successful? How are you able to come back and say after organically the time or six months after the project started or whatever, did we do a good job? Did we do what we wanted to do? I, talk a little bit about that. How do you measure the success of a wiki? Maybe not the wiki itself, but like the, the stuff you're trying to do with it, I guess. I mean, I think you just heard me rant for yeah. the better part of an hour this morning. Uh, w there are a lot of metrics um, that we can use, and it, you know, it kind of puzzles. I'm kind of curious, actually. I'd like to poll the whole room. Like, do, do your organizations care if all of your employees are contributing, or are they okay if only 10% of your employees are contributing? Like, is that, do they even factor that in? Uh, w 
We, we, we tackled it from a slightly different point of view. We, we actually run Media Wiki, Semantic Media Wiki, internal to our organization. It's, it's our knowledge base. Uh, it covers all our IT infrastructure knowledge, covers our project knowledge, uh, and so forth. Um, the contributors, uh, we target. We say, that's the person who knows this stuff. We want them to submit. It's not a, well, who knows, who, who knows about it. So we know who, where the knowledge is, and we want them to contribute to the corporate knowledge base so that it's there and it's shareable and we don't need to look, go, go to them every time we need, we need that information. So we look at the contributors as basically targeted contributors that we need them to contribute. It's, it's different from mm -hmm. the voluntary uh, model. Um, we, we haven't found the voluntary model works terribly well. Um, the, the, the people that you want, how, how do you encourage, if you know who they are, you just go and ask them to do it. Um, if, if, if they haven't volunteered to, to do it, uh, put it in, what, what's the issue? And, and part of it was what I presented, well, it's job security and all sorts of things that actually prevents them uh, sharing. You know, one thing I noticed is it was brought up earlier with, uh, I believe, the folks from GE um, and Ben, it ties into some of what you were saying of we need some of these answers. We do a good job, Darren, of showing the analytics, but it's not speaking to management, I think. I think what speaks is money. And I do think it, that's the missing point there is we haven't converted these analytics to what is the cost saving and maybe that's what, spe what, what speaks to management. It's like, okay, this is worth the time because of X amount of money we're saving. And so that might be useful for some of us to, to you know, figure out ways to convert those analytics into co a direct cost saving. I'll just throw out a random thought since this is sort of related also is uh, I, I kind of see, I see wikis a different way than a lot of people see them. I think in that I uh, get excited when I see conflicts. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I feel proud when the wiki uh, raises to the surface disagreements because I think that's what it's for. You know, I think uh, collaboration, it, it, it's not about we all come together and we have the same opinion immediately like that never ha rarely happens um, but you know a wiki is working when it has identified disconnects and and disagreements and then you use it to communicate and come to an, a consensus um, and so I think that might be another way of measuring success uh, but then going back to Costa how do you convert that to manager speak I'm, I'm not really sure One uh, glass half full kind of analogy, um, but I read a paper that stated that 0.03% of the uh, population that goes to Wikipedia has contributed to it, but that means that percentage of uh, content consumers that are getting something out of it is huge. So even though there's a small percentage doing something, the percentage of people that are getting value um, is disproportionate. Um, yep. We run a couple of wikis and, uh, and the involvement of the user community uh, varies um, dramatically with the purpose for which we built a wiki. And we, we have one that we use for a very large uh, interoperability testing event and all the participants in that event need to enter their data of, of their, their crew and their systems and the tests and the test results and everything in the wiki. Um, so it's more like a, um, a, 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 a process flow that is enabled in the wiki. And that, that means that you have a lot of user interaction in that one. We have other ones that may be a little bit similar to what a lot of the NASA wikis are, are more encyclopedic in nature. And there you will find a couple of champions who contribute most of the data and, uh, and the rest is, is consuming the data. And, and, and in that respect, if you want to draw more people to your wikis, um, you have to give, give them the feeling that they're not contributing for your interest, but they have to get something positive out of it themselves. So the, uh, the benefit that they get from using the wiki must be bigger than the, than the burden they have to contribute to the wiki. 
So you have to be smart in defining the products that make them tick. Uh, and that is in one of the other wikis that we have, is completely the dullest of subjects that you can imagine, is enterprise architecture. But we have created a mechanism to cre automatically create overnight reports that give them data that would otherwise took weeks to compile in a word processor or in a spreadsheet. And, uh, and, and that guarantees user involvement very much. So m my point in short is uh, it depends on the purpose of the wiki, um, but yeah, uh, and, and it depends on what actions you are able to take to commit the user community to that wiki. So uh, I'm not going to directly challenge that, but I kind of maybe take a different slant on what you had said that uh, you know a user needs to feel that they're getting an, enough out of a wiki to compel them to contribute to it. Uh, but I would also say, if I know that something I contributed helped someone, then I'm going to be way more likely to continue to contribute. And so the, I really like the thanks uh, extension, and I wish there were more ways to make it useful. Uh, I try to thank people when I see it coming through my pending reviews or if I happen to go on the recent changes page. But if, if someone does something that's like, hey, that, that's going to help me down the road, I try to remember to thank them because unfortunately that's the only moment that I can do it. Uh, later on, if I go and I'm like, oh, I need this information and I go search the wiki and then I find it, in order for me to thank the person, I have to go into the history and figure out which commit it was that added that and that's just a lot of work. But so if anybody wants to give me an awesome birthday present, it would be uh, Git Blame, or uh, MediaWiki Blame, I guess it would be. So I mean, imagine being able to like acknowledge the people that gave you the info that you needed in that moment, and just to click on it and say, thank you so much, that's awesome. And then it figured out how to send that person an acknowledgement, and then, and then they would be encouraged to continue to contribute, I think. So I guess I'm trying to remember what the original question was. <laughs> But I have a thought. Um, so one of the things I think we were talking about, you know, selling Maybe to management, yeah. you know, and how do you um, convince them? And I, I'd say one of the things I that we noticed quite often um, was knowing who you're trying to sell to, and, and you know, taking a salesman's-ish approach. Um, and often the things that um, are necessary are changing a little bit, like skinning, making it look um, maybe sometimes less wiki-ish um, for the people who are the decision makers. Um, we found often that a lot of the accoutrements, a lot of the window dressing of a wiki um, could be distracting to a higher level person who's trying to visualize how this could be useful in, in their um, organization or in their solving their problem. And sometimes it was something as simple as changing the skin to something that had less, less the edit was less prominent, you know, or you know, you know, that there, was, there weren't as many links or there was no sidebar. Maybe you have a very pretty, uh, you know, some of the other skins like Chameleon um, that have a nice, menu bar up at the top with drop downs um, to make things look less busy unless you're looking for them. And um, just doing something as simple as changing the skinning sometimes made it look more like an application that they were used to seeing in their domain and they could sort of more, and so I'm not saying to hide, they, sometimes we had to actually not say wiki, which, you know, I'm not saying to completely hide the wikiness. But sometimes if you're trying to sell from a business perspective, um, you need to think of those things. And um, so, okay. A real brief follow-up, but when we first started our wiki, we actually had to call it, we chose to call it something besides wiki. We actually called it the EVA library, just because we figured people would associate wiki with the wild west of information and I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was gonna add one thing to what Darren was saying earlier. Uh, one thing that, the merge that we're trying to do now is showing us how many different cross wiki conflicts we had. Um, so like one of the diffs was showing up like 750 uh, different page conflicts. And so the two things that that shows you, one is that across just three mail codes in the org, 
And of course, there's more than three wikis, but just across three wikis, they were literally duplicating 750 wiki pages worth of information across those three orgs. Uh, and there are differences between them. Not all of them were significantly technical in difference. Some of them were just editorial, but they were still duplicating it three times for those editorial differences to appear. But then there are the, the subset of those 750 dupes that actually were technically significant. And that's where two different mail codes aren't talking to each other and they're not hashing out their, their technical differences. Now, the question being how do you monetize that or how do you, how do you attach it to the bottom line? I mean, I'm not, I don't know how you can put a dollar sign on that, but just saying that these three different mail codes had all this duplication, somehow that has to transfer. <laughs> transfer into last work hours. We, but we've, al we've also talked about the contribution and, and the, to me a far more valuable metric is the hits on the page. You know, I can show straight away which are the most popular pages and, and as we're transitioning because we've still got the PDFs on the website and as we're transitioning across we can see all this extra traffic. Now, yes, it can't be necessarily turned into monetary value, but it's showing the importance, the number of people we're having visiting each day. And show, it, it starts to focus the minds of our bosses when you say, don't forget, this is representing your organization. So you want to make sure, you want to put enough resources behind this that it, it doesn't embarrass us. Okay, to kind of shake things up a little bit, I have a fun question to ask you. Um, you're on a remote island. There's no hope of being rescued. You can only have one MediaWiki extension. Which one is it? <laughs> <coughs> the, I've got a question. We've got an answer back here. Okay. Go. Push. Push. The extension push. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is there an answer? So you can get help that way. You can say send help and push it to some other wiki and then maybe some <laughs> Okay. Mine's a lot less practical. Uh, I'm not even sure if this was an extension. I'm, I don't know if you extensionified it, James, or if you just like hacked it that one year. But for April Fools, uh, James uh, set it up one year where when you go to the wiki and you clicked in a certain spot, a Velociraptor ate your face. Uh, <laughs> And I mean, you know, it would keep me in good spirits while I'm deserted, so. <laughs> uh, do you know what, I, Jen, that's a bit geeky. Uh, I'd actually go for the Semantic Media Wiki extension just because I really enjoy building all those relationships between it. So I've got a lot of time to kill, so, you know, <laughs> something to do. But you can't use Semantic Media Wiki without page forms. <laughs> you need a bundle. And, and I would also advocate for display title. What was that again? Say it again. Display title. Display title. OK. I guess maybe practically just the maps extension. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, for best practices, again, for I think a lot of us um, come to these sort of conferences and try to get involved in the community to kind of get a leg up on the time it takes to get things spun up or to avoid certain pitfalls and things like that. What, um, what are some common pitfalls to avoid? What are some common things that maybe you've learned in the time you've spent with MediaWiki that you could bestow upon new folks or folks who are maybe not as deep into something like semantic MediaWiki or semantic or page forms that you're going to like, okay, here's what you need to not do or here's how you should do it because I learned how to do it the wrong way. <clears throat> I think it's the most important thing is the quality of the content. And it's so easy to get distracted with all the different extensions and all these sort of pretty things. Sadly, it, the devil's in the detail and it is getting the content right first and then adding on the extra bits. You really want to jump into, you know, it, it, it's, you're, the temptation is to get there and start, start drawing maps and drawing, you know, all sorts of different relationships. But you've got to, you know, the biggest focus has to be on the content because without that, the wiki, the, the wiki is not serving its purpose. Uh, don't experiment with your users. So don't, <laughs> don't uh, let them be the, the way to trial out a new extension or something else. You know, make sure you figure it out and then, you know, add it to the help uh, pages and then release it on the masses. 
So uh, <clears throat> I think we started off uh, kind of diving into the deep end and seeing how complex of things we could create. Uh, and, and so I just caution to start simple and try to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, and sort of along the same lines, if you, if you do get into Semantic Media Wiki, uh, try to name your properties as broadly applicable as possible. So property title, just keep it at that. Don't make it procedure title because then it's constrained to only procedures and not to books or whatever. Um, I, so for example, I copied over a set of rules into the wiki and I created different properties for like uh, applicable location, applicable hardware, um, applicable category. I mean, I made, I made several of them and then later on it was like, well, that was dumb. Why didn't I just say related article? I mean, the one property we probably have used the most and has been the most effective is related article and that's a fancy way of just saying this is related to that and, and it's so powerful. So. Yeah, that definitely. Um, I would also say, and you're absolutely right, you need to definitely think about, well, when you say content, I think data model. Think of how you're going to represent your data within your wiki and absolutely you want to think of that up front um, and get it good but not necessarily get it perfect because the other thing that you need to recognize is that you can change that data model within the wiki. You can be a agile, but there's certain things that you need to do in order to make it easier to, to evolve your data model later. And one of the things that I found was always most helpful with that is the separation in your templates between the presentation bits and the um, data bits. The, you know, so the, the way that, um, the style that you often see for creating a template where you're setting the values of semantic properties has embedded with the where you declare the display of those values, you put bracket, bracket, property, colon, colon, value, bracket, bracket, or square bracket, square bracket. Um, and that makes it very hard if you want to later on change something to have all of that presentation and the setting the data value actually mixed together. And I find that it's, it, it's a good practice to do your presentation in one part in your template and then have all of your variables or your data set somewhere else. You, you actually reminded me of something. And the idea of wiki is, of course, you're creating this knowledge base, but the other, the other thing you really need to focus on is a knowledge base for those, the administrators, the curators of the wiki. So a lot of, a lot of the forms we created, we had no documentation, you know, and, and I'd actually quite like a standardized way that we should all document. So I could, you know, I could go onto somebody else's wiki and see what they've done. That'd be really useful because most forms are built the same way, so it'd be really useful if we just all agreed, this is how you should, you, doc, you create a page, you know, these are the properties you create, these are templates, this is how it all works. So literally you go in and you can say, right, I get it, I need to add, add that extra. Sometimes you're having to reverse engineer, and if you, if, if, if you can record that up front, it's really, really helpful. Uh, and that actually ties in perfectly with a question or comment I had was exactly what you said, Cindy. When I first tried to learn how to do a form and a template, I picked up one of James or Darren's templates and I had no idea what it did because a lot of it was masked in, okay, in this one template I was trying to copy, they set a property on the top and then I don't see where they set it on this other template and it was because they were doing it in line and I, this was my first introduction into templates. Mm. Um, part of that is also, I don't know how you guys feel about, I guess there's two ways of documenting but some folks know the first few templates I made, I loaded it up with comments. And so it's a little bit ugly to read, but it explained every line of code. Okay, this next line is gonna start the info box, and this next line is gonna be your first line of display on the info box, just because it helped me kind of be my tutorial. Um, so the question, I guess, is more of what is the best practice on how to onboard people? Is it sending them to a tutorial? Is it sitting down with them and working on it one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, any suggestions on how we can onboard people? Can I ask a question about your question first? <laughs> so, um, so you said loading your template up with documentation, which from a, from a um, computer science perspective is absolutely the right way to go if you've got something, especially when you've got such a um, dense representation as, as a template could be. 
But um, one of those things I often struggled with, with adding things like documentation, is the fact that um, you have to be very careful that you're not wa winding up adding additional blank space. But you know, it, it, programming in templates can be a real challenge. Um, and one way I've begun to start dealing with that is putting more and more things that are behavioral than that you would want to document into um, Lua using Scribundo. If only even for being able to separate the fact that, that the template is executable and that you know, you're, it mixes very much presentation in with that. So anyways, but that doesn't answer your other question. But, it, but if you have any comments on how you were able to document templates without affecting presentation. It, it was difficult. I mean, it was trial and error where I would hit save and something wouldn't look right and it turns out that I did have an extra space before the comment, starting the comment brackets or ending the comment brackets. So that was absolutely difficult. And tying in is also just the standardization where when I saw some of the comments that James would make, he would leave a few empty lines and put some um, pound marks or hashtag marks to signify, hey, this is a comment visually, when others wouldn't. And so I was confused on which way should I do it myself. And so we've actually created a standardization committee. We don't, we haven't met in a year, but <laughs> <laughs> the idea was to try to come up with some standards, at least on the NASA side of, hey, these are how we're going to build templates. This is how we're going to document. This is how we're going to, you know, make our fields in all capitals or just different standards we can do to help be consistent. Um, but yeah, the other way often is to also to have a sub page of the template that's the documentation and not actually document in the template. That's actually exactly what we're moving to now with the merge. We're trying to move our documentation into a sub sub page. So, yeah. I like sub pages as well, but also I like help pages. So I think wikis should be self-referential. Like, there's no reason why you can't have information about how to do stuff in your wiki in your wiki, or about your wiki in your wiki. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't think a function or a, a new uh, feature is kind of released until there's a help page describing how a new user can do it themselves. So I think that's actually an interesting point that we've, we've been trying to figure out. So as far as help pages and how to onboard people to using Wiki, so there's a lot of stuff that we all use because we use the, the same software that would be useful for everyone to collaborate on and how to, I know MediaWiki has some of that information. Um, and then there's stuff that's, you know, there's tools that we use at NASA that are only applicable to us and wouldn't make any sense for anyone else to maintain. And figuring out how to structure tutorials to combine those two, because I don't want to redo what's already done on MediaWiki um, or done by some, some other resource, because it is nice to have it within the MediaWiki, within your own Wiki, but it's also duplication of information and it's stuff that we have to maintain and it's just not worth our time. And I'd rather focus on the NASA specific information, but has anyone else worked on structuring like a tutorial for your users that goes in between external resources versus, and then your internal stuff as well? I'm just curious about that. So just to kind of answer the beginning part of that question, um, I'm trying to get a lot of the help pages I built at my last company um, so I can use it on this company that I'm at. Um, uh, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think, um, you know, me and Darren actually were, were talking about this a little bit last night, because um, it, it does feel weird to go out to MediaWiki.org and grab help pages and then bring it into your wiki. But, um, but I think there's a, maybe an argument for it um, when there's some difference that, that we're doing um, that they're not doing. So maybe I'm on a different version of uh, visual editor and the help looks different. But also just the fact that it's in our wiki and someone can just do a search in our wiki and get that content is pretty powerful. Um, and so, you know, you can leave yourself a little reminder by going to MediaWiki.org and just, you know, watching that page and then kind of trying to stay current. It's redundant. I wish there was a better way. If someone finds it out, I'm on board. Uh, just the way we did it, we, are, we absolutely stipulated if the information was out there, we're not to repeat it. We'd only have uh, user manuals that were specific to the way we'd use it. Doesn't mean we wouldn't have a page. So we split, up, we split up the user manual in terms of 
all the way from readers. I've never heard lurkers before. I quite like that. I'll probably change it. Um, authors, owners. Then we have advanced, and then we have the curators, and, and obviously you get progressively more complex as, you, as 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 you go further down. And we would have pages that would just point out to to other pages and ones that we had specifically write. But it, what it also did is creates a syllabus. So you you. You don't. You have that page pointing out, which seems a bit of a you know waste of space in terms. But the point is, you're saying you need to understand this. We're not telling you it already exists there, but you need to understand this to then move on to the next phase. Move on to the next phase. I oh, was there a question? Sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to comment on the training. It's pretty much exactly what you said. We we actually have our training articles in our wiki, um, just because. Sometimes the Wikipedia ones are not basic enough or too complex. So we kind of redo them and make them very simple so our users who are not familiar with the wiki at all can follow it. But most of the time, it's, our screen is a little bit different. Our screenshots are different. So we specialize it to our wiki and have a whole curriculum. Um, we use the semantics so they can search. We have the keywords and so they can search through it and things like that. And we also use really quick videos to show them how to do things. So we have a whole training course to, for them to come on board with that. Okay. Uh, just on the skin point, I wanted, to, I wanted to change it, but the reason that stopped me was because all the tutorials are in vector. You know, and, then that's, and, and I didn't want to then have to recreate all of those. So it means I'm stuck on that. I was just wondering if, uh, I don't think help pages are probably like proprietary or confidential, so would it be possible that as a community we could share any help pages we've created? Yeah, so that, can I, if I can lead into a question. Um, so you mentioned help pages and how, you, how do you keep up with like what changes the software and things like that. How do you all keep in track of all this crazy stuff that goes on? Are you on the mailing lists? Is it... Uh, once a year when you come to EMWCon? <laughs> is it uh, Slack channels I don't know about? How do you all stay involved and stay fresh? What do you, what's IRC? Yeah, you just hang on IRC all day? What, what is it you do? How do you, how do you keep involved? And, and if you can give a critique on where you want to see improvements, I'd love to hear that too. That's a totally selfish question because I'm the community liaison. So. Uh, the only one I do is the Semantic Media Wiki SourceForge, but I would love to see an area where, where suggested channels and so on. That'd be really useful. Okay. So. Um, I'm, I think I'm pretty stunted because um, in a couple months I'll have been tinkering with MediaWiki for 10 years, but I didn't know about this community until just uh, a little bit more than a year ago. Um, but since then I'm trying to join any kind of forum or group or mailing list that I've found and there's just a lot. So maybe one idea would just be a collection trying to figure out where everything is. Is there an Enterprise Media Wiki mailing list? Did do we, we have create one? one? Yes. We do. Yes, no, I'm seeing yes, I'm seeing nods and heads shaking. Maybe. OK. <laughs> On Wikimedia, there is one. So maybe we need to start um, using that. Maybe prop it up a little bit and see if we can get some adoption there. And, Maybe, would people be interested? Maybe they all should leave their name with uh, Ginger, and that way we can start the mailing list with uh, some yeah, announcements okay. and stuff. So, yeah, if, if I don't want to opt you in. I don't want to automatically opt you in, but if you're interested, talk to Ginger, get your name down, and your email address. I'm putting it all on Ginger now. And, and I just want to say, like the foundation, I started a discourse instance over a year ago, so, uh, and I've been trying to get MediaWiki developers to join it because it's specifically for Enterprise MediaWiki. And uh, so if there's interest in that, I've got the space for it. OK. Um, th I, I think that there's a, there's a tension between, so there are all of these pl places that we've identified that the conversation goes on. And so the one thing we could do is come up with a place that lists all of the different places this conversation could happen. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK. However, Another alternative would be for us to standardize on a few, what are the types of communication we want to have? Um, you know, a Q&A like discourse, and there is this new discourse that was also set up for the foundation for, um, a, as a test, uh, the enterprise hub on mediawiki.org. Things could be listed there. But yeah, I, I, would, I would also 
like to see us decide what types of communication, because there are different mediums of communication, like Q&A, like chat, like mailing lists, but rather than having a proliferation of different, maybe we should try and decide which ones are really the most useful and, um, and then identify, you know, direct people there, rather than having proliferation of even more. Um, I just wanted to mention that, at least in Wikimedia, I've noticed a pattern where some sort of communication problem occurs and the immediate response is, we need a new venue, and it never works out right. In the, I'm not even sure how long, in the, like, last 10 years, I don't think I've ever once seen it work. It's like the XKCD comic of, there are 11 standards, clearly this is bad, we should make a standard to unify them all. Okay, now there's 12 standards. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'd very much encourage trying to unify things like, for example, a lot of enterprise MediaWiki stuff is just general MediaWiki stuff. Let's put it on the MediaWiki-L list. Maybe some people outside enterprise are interested. Now, like, use common sense, not all the time that's appropriate, but like, you know, try and go to the broadest places po possible until they're just too busy. I, I think I think we should use our own best practices in this. This is a wiki development. This is exactly what people face. You've got all this information and it's scattered around and, and yeah, we're only gonna have another wiki or we're gonna have another distribution channel or whatever it is and, and, and the chaos just grows. And, and we, we've got to find a way to converge. I've had to develop my own indexes to documentation now uh, because I rely on that uh, 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 on top and it's all over the place it's all over the place and how, how do you establish the links so I develop a page which is my own index to the documentation and then I've got all my hot links and I can I can go out and find it but it's it's bad so uh, organizationally we're not actually converging into some sort of ordered structure Sounds like there might be a start of a SIG group, a special interest group within our community to maybe figure out how we create a place where we can at least point to what's out there and better do better organization around that. Good idea. And a search engine doesn't really work. <laughs> and I, I do want to just say, I've thought about this long and hard, and, uh, and I can tell you that IRC doesn't work for a, a you know, communication channel for most enterprise users or businesses or whatever. Um, but discourse works really well. I don't know if the WMF is going to turn theirs into like official anytime soon, but I, I strongly hope they do. And anyway, between discourse, the ability to search, the ability to categorize things, the about, ability to filter, because general list is too much information. And, and be able to take those conversations over to a wiki, which I also have, and we have, we have discrete wikis that for, are for different purposes, so you just inevitably have to kind of put content in different buckets, depending on where it should be. Um, but that, in my mind, is like really the best solution. From my personal perspective, and maybe I'm looking the wrong place, when I try and find information, um, particularly on Semantic Media Wiki, there's all these talk pages, and, and, and actually it's, they need to be organized and grouped, so in different areas. So, so you, when you're trying to narrow down what you're trying to work out, it, it, it just seems like a massive, long conversation. And you can try and, try and find key words, but trying to put those together into categories and, and sorting them out would make a hell of a difference. We were having this discussion, I think, earlier in the week about the documentation. And really, you want to think about the documentation. Is it, is it designed for the learning purpose? In which case, it's narrative-based, and it tells you how to do the things. Or is it a fact recall, where you say, I I've got to find the parameters for a ray map, and I've got to know all of them, and I've got to know what the allowed values are for all the parameters of the, of the parser function. And I need to see all the parser functions because I may be missing one. 
that, that I need to use. Mm -hmm. So the reference index type of thing, which is around with MediaWiki documentation, there's, a, there's some good parser functions for about, well, 60% of the parser functions probably because all the, all the extensions aren't in that list. They're somewhere else. So you look for a parser function in Semantic Media Wiki, it's not in that, it's not in that list, it's somewhere else, you've got to go and look for it. And so all of the extensions are documented slightly differently. Well, that's part of what I'm saying, is the more extensions you put in, the more diverse your documentation appears. Well, we are getting close to time. I actually think we're a little over time. So I think at this point, I think we'll wind down and uh, we'll thank our panel members for participating and thank you all for asking questions and listening, following along. Thank you.